I loved my last video. <laughs> I looked so terrible in that video that I had great joy because it proved to me nobody looks at me. They hear what Jesus says. <laughs> that means the world to me. All the responses, you have blessed me so richly today already. You know, you bring tears to my eyes in thanksgiving and joy with the responses that have come from the heart. I was just in the process of finding new doctors in this area because my husband, uh, he has a, I think, a loop uh, it, it monitors his heart because years ago his heart completely stopped on him and they said he died and came back. And I was there when the Lord told me he was going to bring him back. Um, I was there the moment his heart stopped and he, his eyes were completely, I mean, he just was like, and his eyes wide open. And you knew there was no pulse. He was gone. You knew there was no life there. And, uh, and I ran out of the camper because we were on vacation. And I ran out of the camper and I yelled, does anybody know CPR? And I went, I ran past four, uh, four campers and the Lord said, stop. He says, I'm bringing him back. And I ran back. And by the time I got in there, the paramedics were just coming through the door. Someone had called 911 because I couldn't find my phone. That's why I ran out. And uh, the paramedics called me aside while they were ministering to him. And you could see he was he was coming back. And they said, uh, he has no idea what happened. We don't either. We only know it was heart. His heart stopped. And... Uh, they said, but don't tell him. We don't want him to become frightened because a lot of heart patients, when they find out that their heart has done something, they get terrified. And uh, I had heart trouble for many years where my heart would go into 225 and the doctors would get so mad because I had no fear. And I'd look at them and tell them, my Bible says my heart won't quit ticking because men's heart fail them through fear. And when they get a heart attack or anything happens to them, they go, oh, it's my heart. And they become so terrified, they can't go on. And if only they could believe. And I'm going to go back to my husband because I, I feel so good today about what God has done. And the doctors went for five days running him through every test that they could find. And the only thing they could come up with is he died and came back and they have no idea why. And I could remember the fear that struck him. And my husband is such a man, he would never tell you, I'm afraid. But I remember him sitting there reading a newspaper and he, on the newspaper, he gripped it <laughs> so tightly like that you knew. And I told him, I said, you know, I gave him testimonies where people that had heart attacks, even they would be afraid to go and go anywhere and do anything. And that if he would come with me and go in our brand new boat and fish and let God cause him to forget it, he would never have it happen to him again. And the amazing, most wonderful thing was, is he listened to me. He went out fishing with me and forgot it. Now, the only way that man could do it is if he trusted in God for his heart. And he did. And the amazing thing was, is we enjoyed the dolphins and everything out on the Gulf. We were so blessed that day. And he came back with this brand new boat. And it wasn't a brand new boat, but for us, it was brand new. And, and we would fish, you know, uh, three times a week on that boat. We were much younger then and much stronger. But I think of the time that God had done this and how people, how foolish they are because they think, well, if he don't confess this and he don't do that, God's not with him. 
well, when your heart stops, let's see if God brings you back. When you who are so skeptical, skeptical and so scornful and so determined that people are never making heaven without physical evidence of it, never making t uh, contact with God without you seeing it, without your witnesses being there. Like I said before in one of my other videos, that it is Jesus Christ told them. He had a witness that was greater than any man's witness. The witness was God the Father. My husband's witness and mine is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you, <laughs> you can't take that away. You cannot strengthen yourself by denying and destroying what God has done because God is not doing it your way. And this is the joy of 2023. <laughs> this is the joy that God is going to bring to the remembrance of his children. He's going to bring them in in droves and they're going to defy the lies that say they can't have it if they don't follow this. And they can't have it if they don't follow that. They can never have a relationship with God because they're a woman and they have to have a man. Oh, oh my goodness, the foolishness of man, of taking the scriptures in combination this way. And, oh, it, it's we are rightly dividing the word of truth and we are rightly doing this until we find out Jesus Christ got married <laughs> because you judge Jesus to be just like you. You're able to do this and that and this and that and it's not of God. So you do, you take his celibacy off of him. You take his holiness because even Paul the apostle said that the person who, who is celibate is holy in body, mind, and spirit. And Jesus never gave in to the flesh. And it takes the flesh to desire a woman. It takes the flesh to desire to marry her. It takes the flesh for a man to desire. And you know, as a pastor or a preacher, you can do that because you're not Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ was tempted in all points as like you were, but yet he was without sin because the flesh is sin. How ignorant can you be? How ignorant can you take these scriptures and put them where you want them? Because you take them on a level of understanding that you don't have in Jesus Christ. That level of understanding is down here of who Jesus is. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. What you have, you deny the blood. You deny, you, there, there are pastors that have millions of followers that are denying the blood of Jesus Christ right now. And now they deny his deity. They deny his, his uh, celibacy. Oh, I'm laughing because I know even though God's heart was broken for the many things that you people have done, he still has joy because he has children that know better. He has children that know who he is. He has children that he talks to daily. He has children that he walks and talks with it and finds great joy with them. Oh, wow, if you only knew. You can imagine that you have him all you want. You could imagine that you are who you are all you want. You could envision it this way and envision it that way. But when God pulls the rug from underneath you and says, you have nothing without Jesus Christ, without the reality of Jesus Christ, because he's going to pull it out. Oh, I know he is. He has to. In order to save you, in order to bring you to the place of understanding with him he has to he has to take what you have done to your spirit and the spirit of others and bring it to nothing he's got to do that you forced him to do that when you refuse to see him as he is you put him in a position of forcing him to do whatever he has to do to bring you into the kingdom 
whether he does it on the last few moments of your life or whether he does it. Because I guarantee you, if you gave your life to him, if you had anything what to do uh, whatsoever to do with him and you went in the wrong path i guarantee you at the end of your life he is going to be there to talk to you about it whether you like it or not whether you ask for it or not you know why because he is faithful he is faithful he is faithful to his promises that i will be with you always even unto the end of the world Oh, there's times where he says, I will not always strive with man. But he knows your heart. He knows all the things that have happened in this world. He knows all the pressures and all the problems and all the things that drive a person into this and drive a person into that. And you are so ignorant, you do not realize that it is not once saved, always saved. That you can go out and do anything you want and still be saved. No, no. There's people that cannot buy their salvation back. There are people who willfully and deliberately hated God so much, hated his son so much, they went directly to Satan. They did exactly what Jesus Christ said when they blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And they said that the spirit that that's in Jesus was Satan. Oh, you think you can buy that back? Try. You think you can turn around and repent of it? Try. Try. Because I'm telling you. I mean, there is a young lady right now that almost killed her own brother. And she is actually supported by her mother saying, well, she saved. She got it right with God. She made it right with her brother. No. No. When you are so criminally minded that you can do such an act with your own brother, and you can use your children to do it. You are in danger like you have never seen. When you can play with God and have peace in sin and say, God got it right, he forgave me. No, it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I had a man that tried to kill his wife and he got caught. He got caught with with a, a state trooper in the in the trunk of the car. And caught him paying money to kill his wife. And he came to me, his wife, and said, you know, go to the jail and see him. And I did. And he said, pray me out of here. I got saved. I know now what she felt like when she was beat because I've been beat in here and I've, I've been suffering so bad. And, and he said, so please, I belong to Jesus now. Pray me out of here, please. And I said, no, it doesn't work that way. You try to kill a person. You need to learn the value of human life, how God values it. So you may have asked God for forgiveness. That has nothing to do with what you need to go through. You need to understand the value of his creation, the human life. So he, I went to his court hearing and the, uh, the judge said to him, he said, but judge, I got saved. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I'm a changed man. And the judge said these words, you probably are. You, you. But the one thing you need is you need to understand the value of human life because you tried to take it and you have no respect or value for it. If people can try to kill someone, and even if they succeed or don't succeed, that is dis having no value for anybody else but yourself. So don't tell me you're saved. Don't tell me that you're going to get into heaven just by saying, I'm sorry. Just by calling up your brother and saying, I'm sorry. Just by doing those things and saying, because your sons should be in prison. You should be in prison for what you did. You should be in prison. So you may learn because when you say, I'm sorry, you don't know the value of human life. When you literally think that God is saying, he may even wash that sin with the blood, but he said, understand, you must learn the value of human life. So you people that love to destroy a Christian,
a true believing Christian, like I said before, they get saved. They have an experience with God and they go smack dab into church and every hypocrite there is to tell them, oh, no, 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 you can't have it. God was never with you. You have to have it according to this doctrine. You have to have it according to what we preach and teach and believe. Because if you don't, then you don't belong here. <laughs> no, you don't. Don't go there. <laughs> Because if you stay there, you are going to get so devoured by the evil lies that tell you Jesus Christ can't exist in your heart and your mind. The way they teach you the doctrine that a woman can't have a relationship. And you ignorant women that let this evil man do that with you. Tell you, you can't have, oh, this scripture says this, this, and this. Well, let him come. He's smart enough intelligent enough they can twist it all up and make it look like what he wants it to be but when he tells you that jesus christ got married and you don't wake up something is wrong with you something is wrong you know the bible talks about the coming a day that you will have to choose to worship the beast or you will lose your head <laughs> You are willingly giving your salvation away right now by because somebody persuaded you with a form of doctrine that I can't have without a man. Woo. <laughs> and oh, the angels. It's because of the angels you need protected by a man. I am protected by a man. I am protected by Jesus Christ. I praise your holy name, Lord, because I have your covering. I don't have the covering of someone who has darkness in their soul enough to make you nothing. I praise your holy name and break the power of the lies of these kind of doctrines and teachings in the name of Jesus for your children that you've been wooing and talking to and bringing to light and they all oh, just just like a monster they get their claws into you and they give you their form of doctrine and they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And they're so foolish, many of them think gain is godliness. And they'll tell you, you're not blessed and you don't have God if you're not blessed and you don't have this and you don't prosper. And you, How foolish can they be? How foolish can you be to listen to them? And you just keep on pouring in the money and giving and giving and giving. Oh, that is pure foolishness but it's also devilishness because Paul the Apostle talked about teaching doctrines of demons and like I said there are those who study demons and come out and they see a demon under a rock there and they see a demon over there and they see a demon over there but God gifted them with discernment and a true believing Christian, they oh, I see a demon, a demon. Oh, you are in trouble with God because you studied Satan to find Satan. God is the one that can teach you all about demons. And it is a personal time between you and him that he reveals things to you that... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm laughing at the foolishness of man that God has told me inside of me. Jesus Christ laughs at your foolishness. But although he's heartbroken of your ignorance of who he is, he loves you. He does not want you. He does not want you missing heaven. And I believe that you're going to have times of experiences where you're going to find out Things are not what you thought they were. And the fear of God is going to come upon you like you never saw. And when the terrorizing Holy Spirit, a fear of God comes upon you. Because he convinces you of your sin. Nobody else does. Not my words, not anybody else's words. It is him. Read it in Jude. The Holy Spirit will convince them of their sin. Now, why would the Holy Spirit do that when their sins are so bad? Because he doesn't want to see one lost 
except for the son of perdition. That's the only one that was appointed to be lost, like Pharaoh is appointed to have a hardened heart and never repent of it, like Judas was appointed to do what he did. There are those of you that, that are following people that have been appointed to do what they're doing, and you write down and, and you vote in that voting booth for them. They've been appointed to destroy, but and they have been appointed to be destroyed. And you keep lifting them up and lifting them up in prayer. You keep holding them up. And as you hold them up, I guarantee you, God is going to visit you for that sin. He will. He will. He'll tell you how many times in that word he said, Am I not going to visit for this sin? Those of you that belong to Jesus Christ, praise his holy name that you know better. But as you praise him and thank him that you know better, remember. Remember he said that when someone else gets caught in sin, for you to consider yourself that that can happen to you instead of celebrating, you know, instead of literally celebrating, oh, this one lost and this one down and this one, don't celebrate. Pray because it could happen to you. He can pull the rug out from underneath you when your heart gets too high, when your heart gets too filled with self. Don't let that happen. Let 2023 be the greatest blessing in your life. Let it be ushered in as the greatest blessing of your entire life. Watch him.